made real. Over to you, Bob. Donald, thank you. Uh, my audio coming through okay? Audio's good. No screen, though. So it's a bit radio-like uh, at the moment. Let me go and try. Let me make sure I'm in. Okay, that's very interesting. Mandy says you sound good. Bob, Bob, do you have a question you'd like to ask the audience while this is going on? And perhaps well, people can start responding. Yeah, that, that would be great. I would. In fact, in the chat, folks, if you wouldn't mind, um, let me know what your um, oh. experience is with performance support. Give yourself a give yourself a rating of one to five for me. How's that? Or, or some comments. One being brand new. It's kind of a new discipline. Um, Five being that you do it every day in your um, in your work, and let me know where you're uh, sort of where you stand, and I'll hop on this. Again. Okay, Bob. Bob, I know what the issue is. The issue is actually <laughs> you're not logged in anymore. Your sound yeah. dropped, but also you dropped out altogether. So you need to go back in and log in again. Your your sound will stay active, uh, and uh, for some reason you, you you dropped out. So if you can log back in. And then you'll be able to here I, screen share. Here I come. And here comes Bob. That's, that's, that's <laughs> making a real entrance, Bob, isn't it? You're really... The joys of... <laughs> you, know, you, you, just, you just want to draw attention to yourself. I know. Well, the joys of technology, my, my friend. So I'm seeing some ratings, some ones, twos, a couple threes. Good. For the most part on the one and two side. Excellent. So let me share my screen then. And hopefully we'll be back in business. Okay, I see. Um, I just one question. I see Dirk has raised his hand. Dirk, if there's, if there's an issue, please, please just um, put it in uh, chat if you can, or, or you can private uh, chat with me if you wish. If there's an issue, otherwise I'll just uh, we'll just pull the hand. Oh, okay, Bob, go ahead. Let me know, my friend. Is, is my screen there? Finally sharing. Uh, I can see the screen. Uh, I'm sure everyone else can see the screen as well. Can we see Bob's screen? Yes. Wonderful, and uh, and wonderful, and I can see the chats coming across as well. So that's perfect. Thanks so much, you guys, Thank you, for Gary. jumping in. Well, welcome, and thanks so much, Don, for that introduction. My gosh, that was. Uh, I hope I can live up to that. It was uh, wonderful <laughs> stuff. It's great being here again, seeing so many friends back on the line that I've either spoken with or met in the past in my journeys over there. Uh, as I said, I'm actually heading over there tomorrow morning and spending a week in London. Uh, for some work. So, Donald, thank you so much for the invitation. And as you said, this is, guys, this is a, a topic I'm ridiculously passionate about. I think in the 20, actually, uh, 30 years that I've been in learning, I celebrated my 30th year in learning this past September 9th when I actually entered into the public schools over here in, in the States as a young, uh, excited public school teacher to change lives and uh, have journeyed and found my way to sitting here in front of you in this presentation today. Um, in those 30 years, my friends, this has been by far the most exciting uh, topic I've been involved in. I, it has really changed my view of instruction. It's changed the way I look at what I do. And, and I'm going to do a, a bit of sharing to do uh, with you today on perspective of what we may mean by that as well as, again, hopefully show you some examples. But please, by all means, um, let me know any questions you have as follow-up. I'll give emails and such out at the end. Uh, let's uh, let this by no means uh, be the end of this discussion. And, I, and what is an evangelist? <laughs> Folks, I actually, ch actually stole that title from my Microsoft days. I was the chief learning evangelist uh, in the learning group for Microsoft for a number of years. Loved that title so much I took it with me to this company. I'm in Intuitive now. We are an organization that de design, develops, and implements performance support for organizations. That's kind of all we do. Uh, and my job, frankly, is to do things like this, is to, is to have these conversations, raise the awareness, help organizations strategically get involved in performance support. For many learning organizations, I know, I know a lot of you folks raised yourselves a one or a two. It is a journey. It's, it's new. It's, it's, a, it's a different look at, at learning, a complement to what, what we do in training. And so I spend a lot of my time strategically helping organizations uh, make that journey and, and, and do things like I'm going to do today, and hopefully this will be the the beginning of that. So uh, keep the chats coming, folks. Let's make this as interactive as we possibly can. I'll keep an eye on those uh, as I take a look as we go along. Here's where I'm going to go today, folks. I'm, I'm going I'm to help you raise some of those numbers you rated yourself earlier. I really want you to understand what performance support is in, in the millennium. You know, it's been around a long time. We'll talk a bit about that. But it really has come a long way. And, uh, and, and I, I, it's one of those 
things, that, like anything in life, I think it's all about timing, right? It's all about alignment. Um, and so I think I, we'll explain a little bit why the time is right. Talk about what it looks like. This is an idea. This this event's focused on examples. We're going to show a number of them live, and some of them via screenshot. A lot of great work being done in this area. So I want you to kind of understand where it, where it's gone. There's there's what has emerged is what we call the performance support spectrum or maturity model. I know we have James or Charles Jennings on this call. He's done some great work in that area as well. It really there really is a, a, a an evolution or an ecosystem emerging in many organizations. So we want to uh, share that with folks and, and have you be comfortable with that. Um, and then of course we're going to talk about well then how do you do it. How, how do we let's move beyond the jargon and the theory and talk about how do you effectively design performance support? We're all learning specialists on this call. Um, many of us having designed learning for years. How do you how do you do this in complement to instruct to learning? And then lastly, of course, we're going to plow into a bunch of examples of organizations that have are really doing some great work at this uh, and give you some ideas around how to apply it. So let's get into this, folks. Here's a question if you wouldn't mind putting in chat for me. What content topic areas are you currently creating performance support as a part of your learning solution? And here are some ideas. These, these aren't answers, but it, are, do, you, do you emphasize IT training, what, what we call it here in the state soft skill, i.e. leadership, talent management, sales training, onboarding, others by all means. If, or, or maybe you're here because, frankly, you haven't really started the journey yet. Uh, a lot of systems training, a lot of IT stuff coming up, David. Thank you. What are some other areas that you're thinking of? Onboarding, wonderful, sales training, more, more IT stuff, great. Very, very popular and, and common night health programs. Interesting. Haven't started yet. Some new folks. A lot of IT. IT is a great place to start, candidly, for a lot of folks. We'll talk a bit about that. But some leadership folks jumping in. And, 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 and I'm glad you're here across those spectrums because uh, the reality, guys, is what we've realized is all of these dots on the board are possible. There, there are a lot of myths around performance support. And a lot of it comes from how it started its earlier days. Um, and that was that it was EPSS. Who knows what EPSS stands for? Who wants to put that in chat for me? It sort of was the was the original birth of this of this uh, discipline in our in our space. But what does EPSS stand for? Anyone know the acronym? Look at you, Wendy. Wonderful electronic performance support systems. Absolutely, and it was coined by a wonderful woman named Gloria Geary. You're going to meet Gloria in a little bit. Uh, G E R Y. Highly recommend you look at Gloria's work, um, and that was sort of how it started. It, but because of the EPSS um, acronym, Electronic Performance Support, a lot of us sort of anchored it in IT stuff, where again it is it, it does a terrific job. You'll see examples in a moment. But it also has really come into its own in almost any area of training. We've yet to see a discipline in training that performance support can't can't add to. So why? What, why why is why now? Gloria first coined EPSS folks in 1991. That may be long older than many of you on this call. Um, I was an avid follower of her. But here, here's kind of why, folks. And I want you to react to this slide for me in just a bit. These are some interesting statistics that are out around the effectiveness of training so far, how, basically how we're doing. Look at this. Look at this. 32% of executives think that companies' training programs are extremely or very effective in preparing employees. Look at this to drive business performance, not so much whether or not they like training. People like training. Um, we get a very different result when, when executives are asked whether they think training is good. Right? But look at how this is stated. Prepare to drive business performance, only 33%. 68% find us average or less. 90% of what's learned in classroom is lost or forgotten within 30 days. Um, not a great stat. Searching, a lot of Google out there. Workers are spending, look at this statistic, 8.8 .8 hours per week searching for information. That's 457 hours a year per employee lurk, looking for stuff. And guess what? What's not shown in this fact, but is a part of this research, only half of that time do they find an answer. So that's half a day a week, folks. Think about this across an enterprise of 1,000 plus people. 
right? Great article, Charles Jennings, Why Don't We Just Weigh Them? Highly recommend you folks read it by Gloria. So half a day a week, folks, is lost, lost, total lost time. Failed understanding. Even with all the best efforts to training, 76% of users have a failed to substandard understanding of mission critical applications, and when it all comes down to effectiveness, or how they're applying, nearly 50% of companies, 50% are not achieving effective levels of adoption or usage across their learning, their e-learning, and their um, systems and training programs. Guys, this is some, this is some, some great stats. In fact, let me ask you a question. Please put this, put this in chat for me. Are these training problems? Is this training's fault? When I was in training alone, and these these statistics are not these are recent statistics. You can see from the dates, but they they've been around as long as I've been here, candidly. Um, is it training's fault for this this bar? What's your feeling about that? Are these related to training alone? Let's see what you think. Ready, Bob, but let's not attempt the issue. A lot of stuff coming through now. Yeah, managers play a role yeah. in the environment. No, there are Con, other issues. Con, Con is in Australia, by the way. I think he's, he's finishing the call about midnight his time. So <laughs> thank, you, thank you for contributing. What a welcome. Oh, my gosh, he gets the award for being the farthest on the map. He does. Excellent. Any others? whether this is training's fault. Norman says training being asked to, to achieve to do much. Love that, Donald. Love that. Yeah, I, I, yes, as you're still pondering or, or adding, I would argue it's not. How sad. But I would also argue, as many of you are sharing, that training alone isn't working. I think we can all agree that training alone is not working. And, 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 and now I want, to be, I want to be careful here because I'm not – saying that training is bad or that people are making a bad or that we're creating bad, bad training. Or that but what I'm saying is that as long as we remain in the training only domain folks, we're in trouble. You know, I, I, I will always face these statistics because, as, you, as many of you have stated, there are so many factors beyond the classroom, beyond the event, right, that we do not control. Or let me put, let me change the word. Not too much control, but frankly, we're not participating. participating in intentionally. As, as intentionally as we are participating in training.
Um, I think uh, we need to make a different effort here, folks, in where we go with our, with what our work. So check out this definition by Gloria Geary. Look at this. In 1991, of all things, it is an orchestrated set of technology enabling services that provide an on-demand access to integrated information guidance, advice, assistance, training, and other tools to enable high job performance with a minimum amount of support from other people. How's that, folks? Talk about a visionary lady. This was 1991. And boy, is she spot on. This is one of the most powerful definitions. I've found to date of the true potential of this discipline. But do me a favor. In, in the chat, what are some words that jump out at you in this definition? What, as you see here, get some key words that you find in this definition that, that jump out at you that really make performance support powerful, on-demand, guidance. On, the on demand's winning. Love, love that. that. Integrated, great. Charles. And on demand, lots of stuff. Accessing info. Assistance. Or orchestrated. Love that word. Brilliant. On demand. Minimum amount of others. Right? Doing great. Job, per look at that. Love. Love. Lorna, thanks, thanks for folks seeing that. Job performance. Here's some that here's some that really jump about at me. And many of which you're streaming, which is wonderful. Yeah, orchestrated. What a powerful word, right? So many times people say, "Well, Bob, we do job aids. We have performance support." Oh, come on, folks, stop it, stop it. That's like saying, "Well, we have we have white." Board. So we have classroom instruction. Oh, come on. Now, now, by the way, or or, or an LCD projector, or or, or a good instructor, or great.
content. Folks, I think we could all agree to any one of those things is not. Good classroom instruction. They are tools of classroom instruction. And when they are orchestrated, see the first word? When they are orchestrated together, we get stunning ILT, right? Technology enabled, on demand, integrated. These are these are powerful, powerful words. But for many of us, these these take training and performance support to a whole new level. So to do it intentionally, we have to look at a couple things. So let's let's look at sort of some examples and and what is. Is emerging as effective in these domains. There, is, there are three fundamental principles, folks, that make performance support performance support. Number one, it's embedded. These are kind of implied in, 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 uh, in Gloria's definition. Um, in the workflow, readily available, right? So this is the whole on-demand thing. Folks, the bottom line is if people can't get to it, they won't use it. That's no, it doesn't matter how wonderful it is. If, 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 if I can't get to it physically, I'm not going to use it. Once I get there, it needs to be contextual, meaning that it's one thing to get me there. But once I get there, if the information you present me with isn't helpful to who I am and what I'm doing, notice role, role and, and, and access needs, again, I won't consume. And lastly, probably the most powerful Um, principle of the three, and, and I think the most misunderstood is that, folks, in this discipline, more is not better. Less is better. Just enough in the form needed to effectively perform inside the business process. So in other words, if you can get me there through embedded, you can make it Textual when I land there, but if you give me 25 links, I'm not going to do it. Performance support is consumed in the moment of need, folks. It's consumed in, in the workflow. People have don't have time. They have to get jobs done. They have to get back to work. And so this, it, these three things are really critical. So let me let's, let me share with you some examples and sort of what's emerging here in this discipline. There really is an emerging maturity model, if, 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 if I may use those words, that we're seeing in, in, in the 10 plus years we've been doing this now. The first is this idea of what's called scattered information. How many of you on this call know what have used SharePoint or have SharePoint at your organization? SharePoint is a wonderful app. Yep, yep, look at all the answers. 
SharePoint is a stunning application. But can you share with me what is the, what do you think is the number one frustration of SharePoint for for a lot of users? Give me give me in chat what you think. Is is some of the common frustrations. Oh, look at you, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> look at the answer. I love that, Bob. It's yeah. just one. How do you ever keep sales reps current in product training? Very, very, very difficult in today's world. So this next level. Of, of, of targeted information support, add, add some wonderful things to what you saw in level one. First of all, it's still embedded, but, it's, but now we're narrowing in. It's highly specialized and stands alone. It doesn't try to be everything to everybody like the first level it is. Secondly, the contextual kind of has restricted access, but metadata is emerging. If you're familiar with what metadata means, it's that we're finally starting to give some sense to substance. We're finally starting to tag the content such that it is, it is Findable, if that's a word, it is now. Just made it up. It, it, in, in context of, of, of the job I'm trying to perform. And lastly, it, 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 it's limited by design. Highly information oriented, not so much performance oriented, which we'll talk about in just a moment. In other words, the idea is we assume people can sell, right? We assume that the sales rep can sell. What, we, what, we're, what we're trying to solve here is they, they can't keep up with what they're selling. See the difference? So targeted information support, particularly in mobile, we see a lot of good work being done here, is helping. Let's climb up the ladder. Targeted. Now notice we've changed here, folks, from targeted information support, see over here above the, the thumbnail, to targeted performance support. Because th there are some interesting things that are starting to happen in our design. First of all, the embedded is much deeper now. The, 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 you actually start finding it. This is where we're seeing, um, we'll see examples in a moment, nested into the application. Right? In, the, in the first two examples, the learner had to bring embeddedness to the, to the table. They had to carry the device or, or search through multiple sites uh, to get there. This, this, is, this is becoming much more embedded in the application. This is for salesforce.com over here on the left. Those of you who do CRM training, I'm going to show you an example, a live example of that in a moment but much more um, embedded in the technology to help you. Secondly, um, it's much more contextual because now that it's embedded in the technology and in, and, and in the application, it knows where I am. Up until now, the learner has had to bring context to the table. In this environment, two clicks, 10 seconds, um, the content is, is, is relevant. And lastly, we're finally seeing some design here, folks. This is where some instructional design is finally emerging. And we'll talk more about what I mean by the cascading levels of support in just a moment. But the point is, it's really starting to key in on this just enough variable. Up until now, it's been not so much just enough. It's just been a lot of stuff, right? So next, now we're going to get real powerful. This is where the, the, the new world of, of, of technology is getting better. Automated performance support. This is where it's become much smarter. It's deeper in the application, but look at this new word. It's starting to understand business process. Right? It's one thing to be nested in the application and just help me with what to do or how to do something. It's a whole other thing when it starts layering on business process. Why am I doing it? In, 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 in what relationship to other roles, other instances am I performing it? The contextualness is much more automated. You see this little window of Salesforce Assistant down here? 
it's starting to actually leave the learner and, and automatically notice, automatically adjust the context, not be locked into context, which we talked about a moment ago. And lastly, real deep, uh, just enough, look at this, driven by business rules. In other words, it's being, it, it's being smart about what's presented in the cascading levels of just enough. It's not just locked in um, to what was there the day before. And folks, lastly, look at this, transformational. This is where we really are at the highest end. Candidly, I only, I only know of myself of two or three examples of this. But the reality is, boy, the embeddedness is not just within an application. It's across the application. It's across the entire business process. Um, very, very, very powerful. This is almost where performance support becomes an ecosystem, not just a tool. Contextual, highly smart. In other words, it's not just um, pushing us stuff. It's actually, look, notice these words. It's observing and evolving. How many of you on this call have ever used Amazon.com? Right? And when you've gone in for a second or third time, it starts suggesting your next purchase. It starts recommending authors. Well, how is it doing that? Well, it's suggesting based on your behavior. It's watching. The, 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 I'm sure you've heard of the, the word big data lobbed around a lot. Well, in other words, folks, we are collecting metadata on, a, on people's lives and behavior in ways we've never seen before because of mobile, because of social media, because of, 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 of the, the systems we are embedded in everything we do. Well, well, we can watch behavior, and these performance support systems can actually change dynamically so that we have smart access. And lastly, really, really business rule-driven, behavior-driven at the most at the deepest of levels, which is at the step level. So over here on the left, you see multiple applications, multiple job, job processes being supported in one overarching performance support environment. So let me ask you a question, folks. Do this for me in chat. Where, where do you see your, I many of you put yourselves down as twos or threes. I think, I think I even saw a four. What kind of stuff are you building? Where would you put yourself in what you are currently seeing in your environment? Give me a number. Is it a one, two, three, four, five? Getting some ones, some twos. A zero. That's <laughs> a zero, Heidi. Yeah, and you guys, and, 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 and this is very common. A lot of us are stopping um, at the ones or twos. And stopping is probably the wrong word. It's kind of the evolution, right? And it's kind of where our world is. But I want to challenge you, now that you understand the spectrum, to go deeper. I'm going to show you some examples in just a moment of organizations that, that have seen this journey and gone beyond um, one and two in their, in their work. So how do you do it? How do we, how do we, make the, how do we move beyond information support and start designing for performance support. Well, there are five moments of need that we have to meet as, as, as designers. I, I don't have time to cover them today, but and I, I've covered them in past presentations. Highly recommend you work at Dr. You look at Dr. Conrad Gottfriedson's work, and I'll, I'll, I'll send out information about this after. Um, we also invite you to join an online performance support community, uh, free of charge. Lots of information there on the five moments. But basically what Khan shared with us is that, you know, guys, we do a lot of this. We teach, right? When people have to learn something, this is how we, we, we architect the journey. We start with the infamous words, in this lesson you will learn, right? That's the training objective. And then we narrow. We practice a bit. We show them details. We teach them tasks. And then we repeat. This is the infamous world of getting people up to speed. Well, why am I showing you this? Because this will not go away, folks. I'll talk a bit about this in a moment. In every example that we've shown so far, or, and we'll show you in a moment, some live ones, these organizations still did training. But the exciting thing is this triangle changed dramatically when they started supporting this intentionally, which is doing. Right? When learners leave training, they have to do stuff. Unfortunately, this is how we've supported them. We, 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 we give them this triangle in the learning environment. Um, it might be an LMS. It might be e-learning. 
It might be books. I don't know how many of you on the call remember books. Uh, we used to have those years ago. But um, you know, we give them content. But unfortunately, folks, it's still in the same triangle. This triangle doesn't work in the context of do. This is the journey of performance support, folks. So, so this is the new design we need to learn. And you're going to see examples of it in a moment. Um, we design for the pyramid at the top to teach. We design for the pyramid at the bottom to support. And, and notice a couple things. Notice the reuse, folks. Yeah, I thought Bob was leaving a pregnant pause. Are you there? <laughs> Bob, I thought you'd left a pregnant pause. We can hear you again. Go ahead. Okay. Are you <laughs> My phone dropped again, folks. I'm so sorry. This is the second time. Are you seeing the, the, the full triangles, Donald, on the screen? Yeah, we've got a triangle, another triangle. It's a propeller. Let's go to this one. Are you seeing the... We have a, a slight... Up pyramid. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Sorry, folks. Yeah, so, so here's the deal, folks. I want to take a closer look at this triangle, have you understand it just a bit more. This is the design of performance support. This is what my organization um, and the organizations I'll show you in a moment have been doing. We still design for the top one, but, but more importantly, What organizations who are doing this effectively is they now start, think about this as, as, a, as, a, as a way to change your approach and journey deeper into the spectrum. The organizations I'm about to show you folks, they, just, they start at this pyramid first. Think about that. For years, for 23 years of my life, every problem was a training problem. And if I had time, I designed performance support. What I'm going to recommend here, and as you'll see in a moment from the examples, if you want to move into the, into the performance support side of the spectrum, if you want to move up into the transformational level, if you want to move up into the automated level, we need to start first designing for performance support and then complement with training. How's that? Here's the pyramid in much more detail. It is, a, it is an increasing level of, of, of support. Think about the principles, right? The, the assumption is this is embedded. We'll show you that in a moment. So when I come into this triangle through the top, I'm getting there quickly, and I'm in the context of the problem I'm trying to solve. This is the idea of just enough. When I come in through the context that makes sense to me, be it process, scenario, role, and such, the first thing I'm greeted with is task. Steps or details. Just folks, just get me back, back to work, right? This, this, this is remember, this is an issue of timeliness to these folks. This is not training where they have hours, minutes, days. This is work where they have seconds. Now, sometimes tasks are not enough. Sometimes I don't understand what I'm doing or why I'm doing it, frankly, right? So notice the supporting knowledge layer. That's the concepts, the background. So if, I don't, if, if the tasks do not make sense to me, give me the option to go deeper, to understand the meaning. Now, the next three layers are where it starts getting interesting. Every organization we've walked into has, has, does not have a shortage of stuff. They have tons of stuff, be it references, be it learning objects, be it even other people, right? Um, SMEs, other resources. What the performance support architecture does is it enables those uh, resources, but again, in the context of the problem I'm trying to solve. It doesn't point me to a LMS and drop me at the doorstep. It doesn't point me to a SharePoint site and drop me at the landing page. It deep links me into the specific reference 
that help solve the problems that I'm currently facing. Be it a reference material, be it learning objects, we can deep link into LMSs, we can deep link into knowledge management systems, um, and then of course people. We can deep link into chat environments, blogs, wikis, link out to people's emails if they're a subject matter expert on the topics I'm trying to solve. But let me ask you a question. Do this in chat for me. Why do you think we put people last in this triangle? In many organizations, when we go in there, people are first in this triangle before they've intentionally tried to design for this. So help me in chat. Why do you think we put people last in this environment? Are they bad? Is, that, is this implying that they're a, they're a bad resource? See what you got for me here. May, may get it wrong, Paul. <laughs> they don't have time to help. Yeah, good for you. Anything else out there? Should focus on the people, not the ta yeah, yeah, task and results. Their time is expensive. Love that. Focus on the yeah, and there's yeah, you guys. The reality here is. People are our most valued resource. Do you agree? They leave. <laughs> I love that, Wendy. Yeah, I guess they, they're, our more, they're our most valued resource. Why waste their time? I'm going to cut right to it. Right? Remember that statistic earlier that, that organizations, executives think that only 32% of our training is actually making people effective performing on the job. Right? We've got to, we've got to run at that more directly. P people, people, a couple of things wrong with them. Number one, they're very expensive. Right? Number two, they are our most valued resource. They have other work to get done. So let's let them get jobs done. Right? Lastly, how does this sound, you guys? They're difficult to scale and keep up to date. How's that? I, they're not dependable, folks. I don't mean that to sound wrong. They're wonderful people. They're, they're trying to do great work. But sometimes they don't know what they're talking about, or they're out of date and don't realize it. A dear friend of mine, Tom Gopperson, who I think is on this call, says that they are sometimes unconsciously incompetent, right? So, so, so they, they used to know their stuff, but now they're wrong. They're hard to get to. They're expensive, right? So, so guys, that's why we put them at the bottom here. Not because they're not powerful or valuable, but because there are so many better and more effective resources. We, as learning designers and professionals, can be architecting and enabling for people to see. So how is this triangle look in, in real life? So this, this is a design metaphor, right? This is how you'll see in a moment we design it in our work. We use a tab metaphor. This is an embedded um, pop-up embedded help uh, in Salesforce.com. In this case, this is to locate an opportunity in a Salesforce CRM. Notice the tabs here, right? And notice where they align. The tabs align to the pyramid, folks. Um, the learner can always go back to the process. We, we greet them with the quick steps, in this case, to locate an opportunity. But notice, if the learner needs it, they can go deeper into detail. We link out to a user guide, not just the table of contents of the user guide, but the page of the user guide. We also have some e-learning relative to this. A lot of you have e-learning out there. We deep link into the specific e-learning in this interactive instruction tab, but again, Everything here specifically relates to the problem, which is to locate an opportunity. The learner chooses to go deeper. Like you design good courses, folks, like you write good e-learning, this is well-designed, transformational, automated performance support. This isn't SharePoint right, or simple information sharing. So let me show you some examples. So Donald, this is this is where I get anxious because you know we have to depend on technology. My friend, let me know if we have gone to my browser. Oh, there, my friend. We have gone to your browser. Uh, we can see it and I can just tell people if they want to see that in more detail, the best thing to do is click the full screen button. Uh, that'll uh, enable you to see it in more detail. 
Uh, and there's a lot of stuff there to see. Bob, back to you. Yes, yeah. So let's so let's go deeper, folks. I want to I want to show you a bunch of live examples beyond the the thumbnails you saw earlier because there are organizations doing this, folks. This is a I can't see your name here, but this is a large um, uh, restaurant um, organization. They are in the process of upgrading. Many of you said you do IT training, right? You support systems. They are in the process of doing a large um, system migration for their back office training, right? So. In the, in the end, you guys, these people want to run the restaurant. They don't want to be worrying about managing a system. And that's the big concern of all of the restaurant owners. They, they know that the system will help them run the restaurant better. In this case, you're looking at a scheduling screen. But in the, in the end, they're all very concerned about training. They're very concerned about effective use of the system. And guys, guys we all know this could be up to six to eight days of instruction. Well, come on. We all know what will happen when those people go back to work after six to eight days of training on the system. They'll, they'll remember, as you saw earlier, very little of it. So here's what we did in this case. Shorten the training. Again, every example I'm showing you still has training, still has the top triangle. But we've shortened it way back, folks, so that it's going to be just a matter of hours of training, not days. And in those hours of training, two things are taught. Number one, the key, the key critical skills most important concepts of managing their restaurants and using the system. That's as deep as it goes. The rest of the time they spend in the system, in scenario, using the performance support you'll see in a moment to, to get themselves out of trouble. It, it, it's, it's, it's a teach the fish methodology, you guys, not a, um, a feed a fish if you know the metaphor, right? So watch what happens. So here I am in the scheduling screen, a very important screen to running a restaurant. I click on the help button, and what we've done is we've embedded in their system this embedded help. Now think about the principles, folks. Okay, number one, it is embedded in the system. Notice it knew where I was. See here? People management, HR skills, these types of stuff, right? So what's happening here is, notice the screen over here. People management, EHR, so, so it knew contextually where the learner was. It didn't just pop up a help search, right, and give them 50 possible options. It was very specific, and, and it's presenting to me the problem I have. It knows, folks, the role. Now, not anyone uses this screen. Department managers and general managers use the screen. So I'm getting, look at this, two very specific topics that can be done here. This is the idea of just enough, right? So all three principles, embedded, contextual, and just enough. Now, there are related topics. You guys, sometimes learners come into the wrong screen at the wrong time. I <laughs> don't know if you ever see that happen in your work. So they can jump out to similar but related topics. But let's go deeper. So in two clicks, folks, the first click launched the window. The second click brings me to here. Notice what I'm seeing, folks. Notice the tabs. Here are the down and dirty, very, very quick steps to, in this case, doing availability math admin, in other words, scheduling. It floats on top of the, of the application. I can move it around. I can resize it. And I can click back over here and start working. Now, if this is not enough, let's, let's, let's follow the whole journey here. Notice this next tab. I can get deeper details. Notice what happens now. I get the exact same steps, people, but look what happens. I get more detail. I get screenshots. I get suggestions. I get tips and tricks. All this wasn't dumped into a help window that cascaded for days. But notice this, it doesn't stop there. What if I need some other related resources? What if I need to go out to a, 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 a portal that gives me more information about what scheduling means, why I should care, what are the latest best practices? But again, only on scheduling. And then look at this last one. This organization made hundreds of e-learnings on an LMS that supported this system. If I click on Show Me, what it does is it launches, I'll bring this window over here, it launches for me the specific e-learning on scheduling. I don't, have to, I don't have to log into my LMS. I don't have to find the course. I don't, I don't have to dig deep into the, and I can literally stop or start this, this Captivate e-learning while I'm in the back working on the system. So I can do a step and start it again. Go to the next step, stop it, do a step, this floats on top of the application in the background, right? So folks, do you, did you see the journey? 
So the learner is allowed to decide how to get help. So imagine what this would do to your training. Imagine how deep you'd have to go. In the old days, we'd go through every click, every menu, every choice. This is a very involved system for, frankly, non-IT users. And my gosh, they would by lunch of the first day, they have no clue. Right? In this case, they're very quickly shown how to do the system. Now, let's go into another example. Let me get a little more, a little techier on you here. How many of you out there um, are familiar with the CRM? Um, in this case, I'm going to use Salesforce.com. Let, let, let's push the envelope up a little bit farther. Let's get more into automated and transformational here. That last one was targeted, right? It was embedded. It wasn't just a SharePoint site and, and go off and search and find and scavenger hunt for stuff. It, it did a good job of meeting the three principles. But let me show you where this can go, folks. Salespeople. A lot of you out there do sales training. Very difficult audience to train. Uh, hard to get into class in the first place because salespeople want to sell. They don't want to learn. They don't want to waste a day anywhere. They want to be selling. Mobile audience. Love that. That's exactly what they are. Right? So for Salesforce.com, again, let's minimize the effort. Sure, there's things to learn. Right? But let's bring them in just to show them the basics. These people sell. They know what closing means. They know what qualifying means. They know what all these different things mean. But I want to teach them how to use the CRM in the context of their work, not in a classroom for three to four to five days. So watch what happens. So here I get this email from my manager saying, we're about to launch Learning 2.0 or Sales 2.0. We've got the Salesforce.com thing. It gives us all these wonderful features. So the reality is, click here to start the journey. So they click here, and what happens is they are greeted. But notice, folks, I'm not in the application yet. This is where the world of automated comes in um, in a very different way. The last one you saw was embedded and contextual in the system. But the, frankly, the learner had to, one, be in the system for it to be helpful. And secondly, they had to be in the right place for it to be helpful. Right? This one instead launches a go live announcement window that talks about, look, why should I care? A couple critical tasks to focus on first, reviewing my forecast. You can read them here. I could watch the video by the CEO explaining why Salesforce is used and their vision. Or I can click here and get started. So what that's going to do is it's going to launch Salesforce.com for me. This is a live system. I'm going to try to remember my password. And here I go. So folks, this is a live version of Salesforce. And notice what happens as soon as I come in, you guys. As soon as I come into the system, another window appears. So notice, I haven't clicked for any of this. That's the point. This is where the automated world comes in in, 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 this, in in where performance support is going. I pushed this information. Like Amazon.com pushed those authors to you. So here are three fundamental things that I want the rep to do first. And they can choose. They can acclimate themselves to Salesforce. They can start reviewing the data that's in there, and I'm going to show them how. I can build their territory for them. Right? These windows can be either pushed we can force them to be pushed. We can program the, to them to come on for a certain time. All kinds of wonderful things. Bob, Bob when, just, when a question, journey, just a question from Wendy Tag saying, what triggers the little windows? Wonderful. What's happening in the background, folks, is this is reading and watching behavior. So as I journey into Salesforce, the, the performance support is watching behavior. And it saw the Salesforce launch, Salesforce launch. It knew the layout that I'm on. It, it kind of, it, it, these are screen reader technologies, basically. Watch what happens, you guys. If I go over to leads in Salesforce.com, watch what happens to window one on the right. It re-aggregates content. It knows where I am. If I go into opportunity, it will go over and say, OK, look, well, relative to Salesforce.com, here are the things we want you doing relative to opportunity. Now again, this window can be turned on or off. It can come on based on certain certain criteria. Right? 
But what it does is it allows me to really um, control behavior and push behavior as opposed to the example you saw before counted on the learner bringing context to the problem. So watch what happens, guys. Let's, let's go a little deeper into here and, and see what I can do. Let me go into Lark Apparel here. I'll leave this window on top just to kind of show. So here is um, this Lark Apparel. But watch what happens, folks. Watch how, how interesting this gets. Notice this top warning. What happened was it read the screen. Not only did it know where I was, it also knows what I'm doing and what I've entered. It went over here and read this, this date. See over here? See this qualifying date? When the rep put in 632.13, that's when they thought they could close it. Well, guess what? Based on our business rules, that's a stock opportunity. It exceeds 90 days and 60 days. So again, guys, the help you saw a moment ago that was built into the restaurant example, it has a pyramid, it has all that stuff. But you see how it didn't cross the line into automated um, pushed technology. It also didn't, 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 didn't um, function based on business rules. This is watching certain things and saying, look, let me give you some suggestions about how to deal with a stock opportunity. Not just how to use Salesforce, not just what to fill in, not just what windows to click on. Let me show you something else we can do. I'm going to go in. I'm going to do a new opportunity. So I went back. So I'm, now I'm going to, you know, out of the left scenario. Now I'm going to start filling things out. Watch what happened here. It read my screen and said, okay, wait, 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 Bob or John, since the last time you were here, this field's been added. See the primary campaign source field? Um, so guess what? Uh, there is uh, some information you need to understand about that new field. And what if I pick Acme as my um, competitive choice there? So I've got them as my, um, as my competitor. What we can start doing, folks, is we can start feeding competitive information to them based on the competitor they choose. So again, I hope you're noticing that this is getting into a point where it's not just, and, and all, all the, and I, I'm not showing it to you here, but all the pyramid stuff is here, all the what to click on, the steps. I want to show you a new generation of where Perform Support's going. Watch this. I'm going to put in a contract value of a million bucks or a lot of money. I'm going to enter and go to the next step. Well, what can happen is that it can jump in and say, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait a second. Uh, you just broke one of our Sarbanes-Oxley rules. You entered in too much value in this contract value in this field, and when you went to this next field, even though Salesforce.com said this is fine, you can put it's, it's a value field, put whatever value you want in there, our business rules said no, 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 no. No, this opportunity um, is greater than $100,000. There are certain Starbanes actually issues you have to deal with. See, see where I'm going, folks? This is not just your, you know, the old days of click on, fill in, kind of performance support. Now, watch where this can go. Remember, in transformational, I'm going to jump over, for instance, to my calendar, because I'm going to schedule an appointment with the Larkin company. Let's kind of play that role out. So I jump over to Outlook. So now I'm in a whole different package. And what happens is the screen reader is able to know where I am in different applications. And what it can do is jump around and notice it changed content. So folks, the days of embedded support being in an application, meaning one, and just helping us with the steps, like you saw in the restaurant example, which is a good one, boy, we're way past that. This is watching my behavior across applications. So now it's serving up for me, in this case, help on Office. And notice, look, here's the tabs again. Here's the steps. Here's the details. Same thing we saw earlier, but now it's journeying with me across application and otherwise. Not just in the one screen, which was helpful and powerful. It's really supporting in the higher levels of the spectrum true business process, true business rules. It is, it is prompting and watching behavior, not just offering steps. We're, we're really maturing into a whole different world here. Now, real quickly before I wrap, 
I want to show you one other one. I know we're coming to the top of the hour here, Donald. I want to be sure we're getting the questions. But let me just show you real fast. I want to show you one other very interesting one because it's not just about IT, you guys. And I'm just going to show you this one real fast. This is from Herman Miller. A lot of you said that you're also doing soft school training. You're doing leadership. You're doing, this is competency modeling. Look at this. Herman Miller's competency modeling. This is performance support that Herman Miller built to support their competency leadership training. This is not IT, folks. This is management skills. And taking what was a very thick binder, lots of information, days of training that the managers could not apply, and giving them a performance support version of that content. So when they get back and are trying to manage hiring, they're trying to support their high performers, they're trying to support an employee that's struggling. I'm, I'm just clicking on different tabs, different contexts across the top. The performance support feeds me different content, different competencies based on the scenario that I'm in. So folks, this is not just for um, IT training anymore. We're seeing it across all applications imaginable. So let me jump back to here and get to some questions, Donald. So Bob? I know we're towards the top. Hopefully it's been helpful. I want to open up the questions. There may, may be some coming across. There are, there are plenty of questions. Don't worry about that. I've been logging them. There is plenty to talk about. Are you ready to go, Bob? What's yeah, what's most helpful, my friend? Well, you've got five minutes, but we've got, we did start off a little bit. And sorry, I just need to say thank you very much, Bob. Fantastic presentation. I've heard Bob talk innumerable times each time I learn something new. Maybe that's because I'm sick, or maybe it's because actually Bob does a great job presenting uh, useful stuff in an engaging way. I've dropped the URL for Bob's book and Bob and Godfred's book in there. Uh, lots of stuff coming through. Because we were slightly late starting, I'm going to just kick on by two or three minutes past the hour, just so we can make sure we cover off some of the stuff we've got here. A um, quick, quick couple of quick technical points about the issue, it's about the system we were looking at there. Guillaume asks, who's updating and populating?